perfect timing. Go. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen quickly here and again just go through what I outlined as kind of a, a quick agenda. Um, Again, I was mentioning uh, last year we did a, uh, our last, yeah, oh my gosh, feels like a lifetime ago. We uh, did a fun little retro with a live audience at the last Collab Summit um, to get feedback um, for sort of the work that NPM is doing and how we're working with the community and then also um, to get ideas on how we can introduce new collaborators and, and new, new ways of collaborating with the community. Um, and so I do have a reference there uh, for um, the RFC process that we've had uh, in place for the last little while. Um, and I would love to essentially use this time to get feedback. Um, if you have or haven't, uh, you know, uh, made a proposal or uh, seen that RFC process or, um, you know, you've, maybe it's been intimidating or you just don't know about it yet, I um, would love to get feedback about the RFC process itself um in this session and i would also uh love to get some you know soft kind of information out of, of this discussion about um how people are using npm today how they can be using it tomorrow uh, which is why I, I suggested we could do another kind of retro if we wanted to um and then i want to also touch on um some feedback that actually john uh noted the other day to me in a dm um just had noted that it sounded like uh, Express has been able to maybe widen the scope and, uh, and uh, ownership of, of folks who can help triage uh, issues, which has been a, a big problem for our team, for sure. We have a very small team right now that's dedicated to the project um, compared to the larger community that I hope and think wants to get involved. And so there's some ideas there potentially that we could introduce some sort of like community team um, our community triage team um, that could help uh, and that could be a step forward to a more um, uh, sort of a, a different state of, of a collaborator that may you know eventually become a maintainer um, and how that looks we could have some discussions about that um, and then as Bradley noted it'd be great to discuss also um, you know tighter coupling with node I, I totally agree and, and think that that would be good uh, good discussion. So um, how do folks feel in terms of this as an agenda? Is this okay? Yeah. Some head nods, it's, it's tough. Um, so great. Uh, what we can do is I'm going to put together a little retro board. I'm going to put these um, three items, these sort of like three buckets um, uh, into columns and then I'll let folks um, so custom demo, we're gonna say, you get to watch me stumble around my screen for a bit. Do, do they pay you? Just kidding. Yeah. You love, the you fun love retro this board. Folks? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just super I mean, they're great. Easy. It's super easy to get started. And you know we've been using it with our team, or we used to use it a lot more with our team uh, during our retro, retrospectives. It's just a quick and easy way to, to get some, I don't know, some fun, fun feedback. Um, I, I just like the idea that also it's anonymous. So when you're giving uh, feedback here, um, I think people are a little bit more open to, to be more transparent. And we got some funny um, feedback, I know, at the last uh, summit, uh, some fun feedback. Um, ideally, you're kind to us. Um, we're, we're doing our best here. So um, I'll paste the, uh, get the Get the link here. Paste this into chat, um, just so everybody has this as a reference. And then we'll time box um, uh, sort of the feedback part of this. Um, feel free to add uh, comments in each one of these sections. So, what are what are features you wish the NPM CLI had that it doesn't today? Um, how do you think we can improve, let's say, the RFC process? And if you don't know what it is, maybe that's even the item that you'd like to bubble up is that, you know, visibility or the communication of what that is, you know, on, you know, don't know, and we don't do a good enough job to, to show how that can be used and, and the process. And then also I would love to know beyond uh, NPM install, you know, what is the most used subcommands that you find yourself using? So, um, so we'll go through this, 
I'll, I'll time box it to about, um, let's say uh, five, five minutes. Um, feel free to start adding um, uh, blocks in here. And then what we'll do is we'll take a, some time to then go vote and also merge things together and, and uh, discuss the feedback. So feel free to take uh, about five, five minutes right now to, to start adding things to the, to the board. And I, I just want to get a thumbs up. Everybody has access or no? Awesome. And so, yeah, uh, as you can see, like uh, uh, the cards should be uh, uh, hidden until we flip the switch here. So. Does anyone have the script to scan the bash history handy? <laughs> to find the I was just googling that but I don't know how to I'm, I'm looking at the awk uh, in order to get my sub commands <laughs> please paste through control the... R <laughs> there's that And I should note here, uh, just quickly, as people are, are starting to add feedback, um, we're, we definitely are trying to focus on maybe uh, CLI specifics. Um, uh, I think in the future, we're going to have a better understanding of how um, the registry and the, the CLI, um, that, that relationship, how that can evolve in the future. We, we have a whole team dedicated um, uh, to work on the registry, and, and we've you know, bolstered uh, the folks there since we were, since NPM was acquired by GitHub. So um, yeah, I just want to be mindful that uh, that's sort of the frame, a reference frame that I'm hoping to get feedback from, um, especially since we have uh, a bunch of folks from the, the CLI specifically on this call. So. about like one minute left uh, people feel like they need a couple more minutes of time no it seems like there's still a few coming in maybe i'll give folks a couple like two minutes two minute warning
a list of features that you wish uh, NPM had is, is growing quite. <laughs> Sounds like we, we all as a community have a lot of work to do. Um, well, anybody... I struggle a bit because some of them are just needing Node and NPM to talk more, not necessarily on NPM itself. Sure. I think that's completely valid. Um, awesome. Does anybody need more time? No? Okay. Uh, so quickly, what I'm going to do here is uh, turn on uh, the cards. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Uh, okay, so I'm going to take the next couple minutes. We can sort of uh, go through these and try to emerge the ones that we think are duplicates or are essentially uh, uh, similar. Um, and then uh, we can go through a process of, as we're reading through this, feel free to, you, everybody gets about six votes. Um, so feel free to just thumbs up what you think. Um, uh, you know, uh, aligns and, and is most, uh, let's say, important to you uh, across the board here. Um, so, ability to publish multiple packages from MongoRepo. So, you know, this is, this is a huge one for sure. Um, deliver code, uh, cache modules, disable only install scripts, allow running other scripts. Tell me what intrinsic modules were able to be loaded from code that was installed, some way to do full updates of all lib to latest, major, minor, private staged releases. I'm gonna increase the font here a bit. So I'm actually gonna vote for this too. <laughs> I'm gonna use my votes here. Uh, ability to do GitHub and NPM release from single command. Yes, I also agree. That's great. Better auth story, scope tokens. Yeah, NPM units. Able to use tabs. Command to see, check the latest version of all our depths. NPM init. Uh, Asking about app first package. Publishing packages. Fully host Dino packages on NPM. Yes, I agree. Not ignores. Wow, okay. That's, I don't, I actually don't think there's a lot of, I think there's not a lot of overlap unless I, other folks are seeing, at least in the column of features they want to see. Um, what I'll do here, oh, audit ignores, ignore specific unactual audits failures, yeah. So let me see if I can do this. I'm going to stack rank these. Um, so uh, they're sorted by top votes. Um, yeah, I think uh, a lot of this, uh, there's a couple in here that I think we've already started some discussions around, uh, specifically the audit, uh, audit resolutions. Um, I'm not sure if the person that uh, made that um, knows that there's a sort of an RFC, an outstanding RFC that we're trying to break down into two separate um, proposals. One for audit resolutions, like a audit resolution schema and, and, and either file or um, change to, to, well, probably like an audit JSON file um, that then we could utilize to, to, to silence um, needless audit warnings. Um, so that's actually in the backlog. Um, awesome. So let's let's take a couple of minutes also to essentially did, did anybody want to talk about any one of these uh JavaScript, so we certainly APM. we certainly have used the uh internal api the javascript api for the npm cli at work um be nice to have one that is a little more polished or stable 
it's gotten better with uh, the lib npm stuff, but uh, yeah, still it's, a little bit it's, wonky. It's getting even better, we hope. Um, so there was a major refactor um, done uh, primarily, you know, kicked off by Isaac uh, back in the summer um, with a uh, project called Arborist, which is essentially the uh, going to be an NPM7 um, quote unquote uh, NPM's tree doctor. Um, so essentially uh, that API uh, should, that project alone should really help with being able to do interesting things, novel things in uh, user land uh, tooling. Um, and I think it should be, and I, will, I think that there's definitely a takeaway here to make sure that documentation is better for, for those um, uh, depths that we, we own. Um, for a lot of people, the NPM CLI is the only uh, project they know about and they don't know about those uh, uh, child depths like, like the lib NPM uh, uh, projects that we consume ourselves. Um, so it's good to hear that um, th there's people in the wild that like want to use, um, you know, want to use the same tools that we are. Uh, I, can, I can vouch having used it uh, that it is much better than the current state, but I also want to encourage you all to think about uh, how it can be even better because there's a bunch of places where I have felt like bringing arborist is the you know proverbial bringing a, a gun to a knife fight, right? Like it's like that does everything, right? That NPM needs it to do. But a lot of the tooling cases that I've been working on, and I think a lot of other folks, like I, I'm sure. Um, Jordan can talk to this. It's like, really, you actually need the tiniest little sliver of it, like, like load the, the real tree or load the ideal tree and then like iterate it, right? Which when you are doing that with Arborist, very possible and, and much, like I said, significantly better than it is today because with the, the NPM six dependencies, you just can't really do it. Um, but also uh, like I re-implemented some of it and it's like twice as fast because it's doing half the work but I don't need it, I don't need the other work, right? I'm just trying to do some simple analysis, right? Like what I think um, Jordan did with the, uh, what was that package that you worked on, Jordan, uh, that used Arborist? LS engines. Yes, exactly. It's, yeah, uh, uh, Arborist, Arborist is really, really, really very awesome. Um, it's a great improvement. Uh, it, if it delivers on the promise, if Rayify does what it's meant to do, uh, it's it's just going to be a game changer in terms of no longer having to RM minus or F node modules every time. Um, I haven't tried that function just yet. Uh, if, but uh, in addition to Arborist, um, it, it would be nice to get an overview of all the other modules in terms of how they're going to progress because we've, well, some of us have heard about Arborist and that it's coming and that it's awesome. Uh, but some of the modules may be getting deprecated, maybe getting moved, and it's uh, and because there's a lot of them, it's it's kind of tricky to 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 remember all of them and to to keep track of of all the ones that are available. Um, I think uh, the the script running stuff. I think there's at least two or three different generations of that under different names as well. Yeah, the, I, we have a to do right now to index essentially. Um, the supported, we have a maintained uh, section, uh, maintained dependency section in the wiki of the CLI. So if you've ever gone in there, um, there's some documentation and I'll just quickly jump over so folks see this. And this list has not been well maintained and we, we need to do a better job. Um, also to, to your point on uh, getting an understanding of if some of these things are gonna become uh, deprecated or, or not deprecated, but uh, like we won't be using them within the CLI necessarily. Um, you know, what, what does it look like for long-term maintenance of some of these dependencies? Um, so this is a good list if you're wondering, you know, what, what are some of uh, the depths today that we um, uh, consume internally? Um, and this is sort of speaks to also what uh, Brad was saying, like, uh, you know, there's some things in here that we know that the community consumes outside of the, the CLI in their own tooling. Um, so 
we, we're very aware that the surface area that we support is a lot larger than just the one project, right? Um, so that's, it's, that's really good feedback. I think that um, it, it goes to, to expose that we need to, to be giving even more uh, visibility into the status, the state of these projects and, and their future. Um, so like roadmaps, yeah. et cetera, release schedules, all that stuff. Go ahead, Ro. I think just to speak a little bit about uh, the point uh, Wes brought up, uh, we definitely have already the radar to do uh, some refactors on, on Arborist. I know like we want to break down, uh, uh, especially the all the data structures, like, set, like into split, like split, like so like definitely there is some Arborist like uh, refactor on our, on our to-do. Is there an issue though, like Wes, you said specifically, you thought there was work to be done either in the API itself or the documentation. Did, do you feel like you could create an issue against the project itself and just yeah, note that I, so it doesn't get lost? I can, I worry because it's so in flux, like, and, and every time I bring it up to Isaac, he is very aware and has said, yes, we have plans. So I don't want to like pile on. And I also don't want to like repeat things that are already top of mind but I, yeah. i'm happy too if i just don't want to you know i, I don't want to I'm, I'm already a squeaky wheel sometimes so i don't want to make it worse no i think one key key thing there and, and what you just said and what we're trying to do is um we and us like like uh, i want we want to change we versus to like us like as a, a group everybody on this call um you're you're giving your time right now and and interested in the project and and giving feedback and that that's huge so my hope is that like we continue to to have the lines blurred in terms of the maintenance of the npm uh, project um and people feel like they can contribute and that the roadmap um is, is something that they're affecting and that the, you know the work that's being done you have ownership so um, i'm interested in those types of conversations of how we break down the walls of like you know there's there's some uh innate like roadmap or understanding of where the project is going that only we know um which the is the dedicated team um that that seems problematic to me so i, I want to make sure that like we start to break down that that kind of like you know feel free to create an issue and we should all have a discussion about it right um yeah, yeah I'll, i will do that but i don't want to promise a timeline because no no i don't want to also I, yeah. like yeah yeah okay. okay but i will do that at some point awesome is there anything else in this sort of like features? So uh, the top two or three maybe would be good um, to look at uh, JavaScript API um, for publishing packages. Uh, this is definitely uh, interesting. Is this a, it's written in JavaScript. We, we do have it live in PM publish, right? Yeah, I'm just wondering, like, uh, what what the outcome of this is, like, pack, and then I guess that can I, be consumed, like, yeah. Uh, this three week run, I added that option. Uh, sure. So we use JavaScript for publishing our npm packages, and we use the uh, we call CLI from our JavaScript. So if there is a JavaScript API, we can just call npm API directly for publishing. Ah, uh, I see. I see, yeah. I see. Like we okay. have to create a charge process and call the CLI command to do publishing or other NPM things. Okay. So, okay. I see that. And are, you are potentially able to do that with lib NPM uh, publish uh, today? We haven't explored it yet. Uh, okay. Thanks for the link, uh, lib NPM publish, right? I'll take a look. Do you share? Thanks, Ryan. Uh, I don't have the chat open, so uh, uh, folks have been. Uh, it was Claudia. Here. Oh, awesome! Thank you, Claudia. She's been working on that <laughs> a bit recently. Um, okay, uh, a better auth story. Scope dot auth tokens uh, web auth flow. This is. I think this is definitely something that we can improve. Um, hindsight is twenty twenty. You know, um, I think. Uh, we can definitely do a better job. There's even small improvements to the auth token um, experience that we have today. So um, it might be longer term, especially because this is uh, dependent on the um, registry. Um, 
and what the registry supports uh, in terms of enforcing that auth and, and let's say scoped auth tokens. Um, this is a, uh, for folks that don't know this, there is an RFC um, about stage publishes that mentions um, scoped auth tokens. Um, and so that, uh, that we think might help address maybe this kind of feedback that people want a more sophisticated publishing um, uh, at auth work flow. Um, okay. Uh, the next one here, and I'll, I'll maybe we'll touch on this the last one, unless folks want to uh, uh, bubble it up, and then we'll move on to the how we can improve the process. Uh, some way to do full update of all libs to the latest or major minor um, full update. So is this similar to NCU, like uh, no uh, check updates? Is this the idea there? Uh, I'm not sure the exact oh i i see so uh, instead of just having npm update and a single package yeah. you would just do npm update dash dash all maybe yeah yeah exactly it just uh with uh with every token you you can define your npm install but sometimes you want to let's say try to upgrade everything and even if it's break to test and fix it and it is let's say some kind of big project or the stuff or monorepo and stuff like that you need to update uh, every depth uh, uh, with the uh, latest or everything to to remove the let's say the dash chevron or every symbol you want so it will be i think it will be a great addition to to be able to even if it's break everything with a flag or something like that to be able to uh, to update everything to the latest uh, maybe you choose a latest major or latest uh, minor uh, it depends but something like that uh, the reason why I re-implemented some of Arborist was because I just implemented this. <laughs> okay. So, so it's for what it's worth, this is a very good thing to have, and this is what we're going to be rolling out inside at Netflix uh, yeah, yeah, over I the have, next couple uh, of months. I have my type of script to do, to do that also. So. I would love to get feedback from the group. Like, do, have people also used like, other tools? Like, I know I've used in the past also like Node Check. Uh, I think it's Node Check Updates, NCU. Yeah, and I NCU dash you. Yeah, Sorry? I use that one. And I, I use it all the time and I've always like questioned, why isn't this just in NPM? I feel like this is, I think the other thing too is coming from just other package managers. I've always expected NPM to do that. And then I always have to remind myself when I'm away from Node for a little bit, then I come back like, oh yeah, it doesn't actually work that way. It works this way. I gotta go use some other library to, to update everything. So it just seemed odd. So. I think there's a couple things there. One, I think, you know, the community is clearly saying that this is, I use it that too, like, by the way, <laughs> I work on MPM and I use it. I think there's a, some op opportunity here because we have just, um, I think we've just ratified um, the dash dash all um, uh, flag for, I think it's, um, is it, uh, I forget Claudia, it's for MPM outdated or, what is the command it was sort of attached to? The npm all? Yeah, that, that flag. So, so instead of, oh, because we were removing depth. So um, that all flag, I think, would make, could maybe help in this regard. Um, but I, I think that, you know, we historically, uh, I don't have the context of going back to when uh, uh, update was originally created, but the I think the idea here is that we want to respect your your semper range, um, and so to be very explicit about when like what type of updates you want to to have might make sense. So dash dash all and then latest or something like that might help. Um, yeah, dash dash all dash dash uh, break everything. If you're looking for a name, something like break that. everything. Yeah, break everything. Yeah. <laughs> So the current behavior so I think, for oh, some of her is, is fantastic, but sometimes it's not enough. Like, I think it's a great default. So Yeah, I don't think we would ever change the default, uh, but I, I think that a way to opt in to break everything um, or just truly give me the latest, um, yeah, is interesting. Well, fixing, fixing the bugs in the default would be great. So there's some behaviors that the default does that just, even though, yeah, saying, 
uh, we won't, we will take those what you wanted, right? That which is, is, is what you're saying is the default. But unfortunately, it doesn't actually work right. If you say you wanted 1.0.0, it'll change you to caret 1.0.0, right? And that's so, like, so I, I don't want to harp on the, yeah. the bugs there. I want to, I would prefer to present an alternate universe and, and talk from there, uh, which is what I've been working on. Yeah, I hope that some of that nuance is going to go away um, here soon. Um, between with Arborist. Our, yeah, with Arborist, between the LS update, um, outdated. I, we're also looking at potentially some designs for, for how we can merge those views because we've had those discussions about what's the difference between outdated LS. Um, you know, you're just showing a list of packages like, you know, what, what's, you know, different states um, for each, right? So, but I also think that one, one of the issues with the current thing is that it's not really thinking about it as a holistic workflow. It's thinking about it in sort of these isolation pieces, right? Like, like the description here is I want sometimes to break everything, right? That's actually a user story and we don't really have a coverage for that. So we have like this outdated and, and updated. And because the, 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 we're thinking very low level when that was implemented. It's like, well, outdated tells you what updated will do. Well, actually, that's not really what people always want, right? Like there's cases where we run updated multiple times. So you say you run outdated, then you run update, then you run outdated and you actually get different results. You don't get no, up, no, no response anymore. You get like totally different list of dependencies, right? So it's like a bunch of workflows here that weren't thought about in a holistic sense, they were thought about really in like this, well, updated does what, or outdated does, tells you what updated will do, right? And that's just not what the user actually wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I want to quickly just time box this so we can get to maybe the RC processes. And then um, uh, I feel like only uh, a few folks actually got to the, that last column to, to unless everybody just uses npm run or uh, npm just install and that's the only thing they use. <laughs> well, real quick, the, before sure. you jump threads, um, sure. are, is there anyone on the call, particularly the npm folks who hopefully will be looking at this chart later, uh, who doesn't understand all of the green items? Because some of, so, like either the person who posted it or someone else can probably fill in. And so like I don't entirely understand the sure. deno ones and would love some elaboration, for example. I, I think that's great uh, feedback. Let's maybe dive in, uh, just to make sure that- yeah, the, Or even if we don't have the time. Just, just a high maybe. level overview. I don't want to deep dive into any of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But be, even maybe it's just, uh, I mean, at last, uh, just leave a comment there You can where the person can like explain a little bit more. But like, like you say, we might come back to this and it would be nice to have uh, more context on this. Yeah, so the ability to host uh, Deno packages, packages might be specifically the one uh, maybe you noted. Um, I'm not sure if anybody else has ideas uh, of what that would look like. Uh, hi, this is Trivika. Oh. Uh, I had added that uh, hosting Deno packages on GitHub or NPM. So currently, GitHub, if I release any tag version, then I can download that TS file uh, in Deno. But then there is no guarantee that it is immutable uh, there is no guarantee that it's immutable, uh, immutable. It can be changed right mm -hmm. so there should be a way for package authors to publish a version on deno so that the published version becomes immutable how isn't deno's url model though like that's an, an intrinsic part of its design like that seems like something deno would have to alter because it's always a url and every url is always mutable Yes, so uh, the URL, like the contents of URL, you mean, right? Mm -hmm. uh, my request was the contents of URL should not be mutated once it is created. Like, for example, in NPM, I add a tag to a package and I publish to NPM. Then, if anybody downloads that package uh, from NPM doing NPM install, mm -hmm. it is always guaranteed that that particular object will not change. But that's like a contract between you and the server, right? Like, like that's part, an implicit part of the NPM protocol, but it's like, yes. The... Yes. So there, okay. there should be some locking mechanism introduced 
so that when Dano publish is done and the URL is hosted on GitHub or NPM, that uh, version is immutable like once it is published. Okay, that, so you're that, essentially that, asking for a like a, a something that works with Deno that provides the same immutability guarantees that NPM does. Yes. Okay, thank you. That was I just needed the context. Can I get minor clarification? Um, is the expectation that you would need to have a unique URL for that version, yes. or are you seeking? Okay. So if you go to so Deno, like package.com. Yeah. Yeah. So like that. Yeah. Or denopackage.com. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah, this is a, a definitely interesting, interesting idea. Uh, we've had discussions with Unpackage in the in the past, and uh, we've actually tried to start to uh, uh, provide f features similar um, historically, but. Um, again, that's that might be a, a larger discussion to have with the registry folks down the line here. Um, yeah, I think, but I, I think, think I understand. Yeah. Go ahead, Miles. If I could add one thing that I think gets really interesting in the story of, of Deno here, and I think this is a great example of where like NPM as a team needs to collaborate outside of just NPM. Um, publishing to Deno land right now, to my understanding, is adding an entry to a JSON. And then like it, it sets up uh, redirects. Um, so, and, and Deno itself kind of like prided itself in its initial initial release on the fact that it did not have a package JSON, that it did not have these things. Um, for what it's, so, so for what it's worth, um, this is in no way me saying we shouldn't make, that NPM shouldn't offer something for this community um, or, or something like unpackage that, that publishes the URLs, but, a great example would be like a Deno package as it exists right now generally doesn't have a package JSON, doesn't generally have a main, doesn't generally have like a lot of things that we talk about potentially even already validating on publish um, to the registry. So there'll be some interesting work to be done in kind of like meeting um, Ryan, the Deno team, and the people who are working in that ecosystem, like where they are to figure out like, what does publishing even mean um, to your ecosystem and what do you want? Um, I think similarly um, in the CDN like approach, like something like Unpackage is very unique and awesome in that like, hey, like we could kind of break everything apart. But as long as modules are using uh, bare specifiers and those bare specifiers are not coming with an import map to resolve it, the exploded packages are not even useful. So it's like, um, Again, I'm not saying we shouldn't explore this. I actually think it's one of the most important things for us to explore and have a story around. But I think there's some really interesting questions to be had about developer experience and kind of like what it means for that ecosystem to be engaging uh, that requires kind of all of these different stakeholders at the table. And I should also add to that, if any, any folks didn't see Miles's talk, um, at the OpenJS World, uh, I think with, um, uh, I forget who was also on that uh, call there, Miles, uh, for export maps, like is, it seems to like land in this as well. It seems like the web, um, the web or the front end module uh, story is starting to look a lot more similar <laughs> to, to nodes. Um, and, yeah. and there's things interesting there too around like web packages and signed exchanges and right, bundles right. and like yeah. there's so many other technologies that are being worked on. Um, I think there's a lot to think through about like what the future of these technologies looks like. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of good re uh, references that I even picked up from, from your talk. So, um, okay. I, I apologize. We're, we're running late here uh, and, and low on time. Um, is there any uh, any other items sort of on this list that may not be as self-explanatory that we want to, to bubble up here in the green section at least? So or, yeah, I think you can actually article. kind of merge the frozen intrinsics one a little bit with the audit um, filtering. Just having any sort of audit filtering quick defaults would be nice. Uh, so manually the, filtering would be painful. So the intrinsics with the, where's the audit? Sorry, is it audit? That one got pushed way up there. Yeah. Because yeah. like 
it, with frozen intrinsics, you don't get into the prototype pollution noise usually. So. So can I ask here, you're, you're asking for some layer in the process to do some static analysis on the source being bundled into the tarball so that we can tell which intrinsics are being used by the package? Uh, that's a different issue. No, okay. frozen so intrinsics is just a way of basically doing things like freezing object.prototype. So prototype pollution is technically right, but, possible, but um, Okay, but feasible. in order to do that, right, so, so you're trying to get NPM to tell you if this package would be affected by that, you would need to see if it modifies one of the intrinsics, right? Um, no, because the reports generally state you know, this is a prototype pollution attack. It does this. It's part of the oh, audits Oh, just for the CVE. I mean, but oh, NPM packages aren't even touch. necessarily code or JavaScript, right? Like, it's just a tarball and a manifest and a name and a version. Like, so that, yeah, like, they got I can see how that's useful. for some reason. They got what, flagged the because mean? somebody, yeah, because somebody had, had sneak thought that it was a fun idea to, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I mean, CVEs certainly, like, largely incorrectly are hit NPM modules, but, like, they could be command line. They might not be JavaScript, right? Like, it could be you NPM install something that gives you English instructions to do something bad, and the CVEs on the instructions, right? Like, <laughs> I could see something like that maybe getting hit by a CVE at one point. So, like, while I totally see the utility here, like, it feels too tightly scoped for what NPM generally does to me. I think it's something that prototype can... pollution in particular is a lot of noise. On it, it totally is, and that's like that's a huge just like and so uh, like I perverse incentive of the way just, that the security apparatus is designed. But like, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I particularly just want to have some sort of sane filter that, hey, I see this problem comes up a lot. Node introduced a flag to mitigate it just have a list of like things that are mitigations that oh, you're I using. See. Like attach it to the, the CVE itself and say like, here is the fixed instructions or something. Or if you're running with this, it don't warn mm -hmm. on it or whatever. So this goes back to, I think as well, probably to your idea of like being more tightly coupled with node, like NPM should have a tighter mm -hmm. coupling with that a downstream support. Is that right? Or is that sort of a line as well? Yes. So like is Node is updating features in response to like noise from the NPM ecosystem. And like there's, there's just not back and forth that as those features land in Node, there's no way for NPM really to communicate that right now. That, hey, there's a newer feature. Please just use that if you want this to be quiet. Sure. I just want to be mindful of time because we're uh, essentially getting up there. Um, in terms of the RFC process itself, I, I would love to to take back this feedback and and potentially, if you feel comfortable, feel free to add a comment with your, you know, at, um, and I can follow up uh, with any folks individually, or, or we can have discussions there. I'd also encourage folks who haven't been to one of our calls to to join us. Uh, we've been trying to run uh, a discussion weekly. Um, so similar to sort of this round table that sort of we've had today and then a little bit of a retrospective um, is a little bit, sh bit of a shift from what we normally do, but um, it is opportunity for us to, to have discussions like this about um, features, future work that um, we should get to and, uh, and things in flight. Um, I do also want to quickly just note um, and thank uh, John for, for poking me about the idea and concept uh, around um, having a team of community-based folks that are willing to get into our repos and start to um, help triage issues. And that just means labeling and, and maybe helping contribute to give feedback um, and also PRs. Is there anybody on this call that has any interest that I could uh, tap later in, in terms of uh, um, maybe being a part of that that team? Um, 
I have talked to you. I, I, I may be able to supply one or two. Uh, I'm in the process of leveraging that process um, sure. as a part of changing our organization's behavior. Let's change this. Interested. Don't put my company's name down there. That's part of the rules. <laughs> okay. Um, feel free to add yourselves to, let's say, a list. Uh, add. If you're interested in getting more involved or potentially seeing what it would mean to, to be on that team. Uh, and then I can follow up with anybody um, after this call to, to um, see what that might look like. Um, I'm definitely interested in, in expanding, as I said, the, the sort of circle of, of folks that are, are contributing. Um, and I appreciate everybody for contributing today, their time and feedback. So um, yeah, uh, appreciate it. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now. Um, did anybody else have any like sort of last notes or comments they wanted to give? So I was just wondering if everyone would be clear about uh, code cache. Is that something uh, you um, would know what it means? Uh, is this towards? A little bit upwards, 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 upwards. Are you? There, deliver. Uh, maybe no, I can ask. Deliver code cached modules. Go ahead, Brad. Are you asking for the delivery from uh, the install to be the cached form? Or because V8's bytecode cache is per architecture. Um, so it's not portable. Or are you asking for? Um, the code cache to be generated when it is installed. So I would be fine with both. Ideally, it would um, be already generated up front so that it does not slow down the installation process. Um, and, and then during install, it could just be checked what system it's currently running on and if it is already there or not. Otherwise, you would have to generate it, of course. Um, but even if it's just done uh, um, after installing, that would also be already great because um, Node.js startup time is one of and the main issues for uh, big applications. And this would improve the startup time. And uh, the ideal place, out of my perspective, to do this is uh, code cache modules. So one thought that I have here that um, don't have an answer to, but it's just like a question I've been asking myself is um, selfishly, I am like ramping up on product at NPM and thinking through these problems in that capacity. Um, but kind of like wh where would it make sense for NPM to draw the line on what they offer as kind of like official products versus like what are base capabilities that NPM needs as a platform to allow others to build interesting services on top of it. Uh, I think a really great example of something like this is um, like Pika and the work they're doing with like Pika and Snowpack. So, um, you know, like Pika is doing something where they have like an alternative CLI that is able to, you know, like transpile modules for the browser at install time. So to um, kind of what, what you were saying there, um, Ruben about like code caching. Like I personally feel uncomfortable with the idea of like the registry of record making any large changes to the source text that's being published by an individual. Um, but I see no issues with on one end, like having tools in place that um, allow for like kind of optimizations pre uh, publication or allow for all sorts of like interesting ways of, of handling things uh, during publish or alternatively, you know, like enabling services that can take published assets and then from that kind of uh, do these optimizations at install time. Um, but I'd be really interested in kind of like other on the other people on the calls thoughts about like kind of where NPM should draw the line as a platform and what, what is the responsibility. And I guess the other flip side to it too, and I don't see anyone on the call who's running any of these other registries or other products, but kind of like, where is the line to ensure that we're also allowing for innovation within the ecosystem and not just trying to be like the whale that eats everything? Yeah, 
I, I have a, a thought to share about specifically yeah, the product vision. I think even like uh, I would love for us to even have the the capacity to maybe just have like alternative implementations too, right? Where we consume the internals but in a different way, right? So that we can be like more exploratory and even making sure that we have a core that can be reused across like competing uh, clients, right? Uh, so I will, yeah, yeah, it's some of the things I have in the back of my mind. Uh, I would love to have uh, more time to play with. For sure. I just want to be mindful of folks' time. We're about five, six minutes uh, over. Um, I know this is the last session of the day. Um, again, I would encourage everybody to join us uh, again in the weeks to come here uh, at the open, open RFC calls, as well as uh, hopefully discuss um, you know, uh, this session and other sessions in, in the Kiko chat, um, as well as there's the Slack channels for the uh, Node project, as well as the OpenJS uh, uh, Foundation's Slack channels. Um, so I would encourage everybody to uh, join us in those, uh, those channels and, and feel free to uh, poke me if you have any other feedback you want to give about this session or, or sort of NPM in general. And, and also feel free to uh, poke Miles or, or anybody else that's on, the, on this call as well. Um, so yeah, with that, I, I want to appreciate everybody who stayed till the end here. Um, thanks, Michael, for, for also jumping in and recording. Um, and we'll try to jump over to, uh, um, I think, is there a, a last session or a, a sort of another call that's happening here at the end of the day, if you folks know? Um, looks like there might be, might be the end, but oh, might be the end. Is, is it, uh, well, I mean, I, I don't want to go out with a whimper. I'd rather go out with a bang here with the collab summit. It's um, the last it's thing my, on the list. So, yeah. well, I, I can say this it's my birthday today. And, Happy birthday! Uh, Happy birthday! Happy birthday! birthday. <laughs> we could we could drop to the central garden and see if people are still around. Oh yeah, that'd be that'd be fun. Um, I I know for myself, I, I actually also have a hard stop, so I'm not sure if other folks. Um, yep. It's Friday here in in my area, uh, so I'll, I'll be taking the weekend off, and I hope everybody's staying happy, healthy, and safe, um, uh, wherever you are, and. Um, yeah, I just want to say thank you again. And uh, I enjoyed a lot of the sessions that I was able to participate in. And I, I appreciate when we can get together virtually and especially when we can get together in person. So, Cheers, everyone. Talk to everybody yeah, later. Right. Bye. Bye-bye. See you soon. Bye.